think I'm a great excitement from the events of the afternoon. Sitting in his armchair, Silas looks as happy. On the table laid the long lost gold. If you hadn't come to me when you did, I might have gone to the grave in my misery. If not for you, they'd take me to the workhouse and there'd be nobody to me. The blessing was mine. A sort of feeling come across me now and then, as if you might be turned into the gold. I thought it'd be a curse if it returned. But you see, it's been returned now, as if it's been kept for you. It's wonderful, wonderful. There was a knock at the door. Epi rose and flushed. We saw Mr. and Mrs. Godfrey pass and made her little rustic curtsy, opening the door wide for them to enter. We're troubling you very late, my dear. Anna! Oh, it fills me with comfort to see you with your money. One of my family did you wrong, and I feel honour bound to make it up to you. I count it no loss for thee. You're not answerable for it. Whatever I do from here forth will be nothing but paying a debt. I've much to thank you for already. There are still things I feel beholden to you, Marna. This money on the table is but little. And it wouldn't get you far if you were just one of you. And you have two to keep. I'm in no fear of want. We should do very well, Epi and me. I don't know what it is to gentle folks, but it's far too much. For it's nothing we want. You've done right by Epi, Marna, for 16 years. It'd be of great comfort to you to see well provided for, wouldn't it? But taken care of by those who can make her well off and make a lady of her. I don't take your meaning, sir. My, my meaning is this. Miss Cass and I have no child of our own to benefit from our good home. We should like someone who is of a daughter to us. To have Epi. We would cheat her very much as she was our own child. My Epi. Epi will always want to be grateful to you. She should come and see you very often. We'd all look to make you comfortable. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. But I can't leave my father. It is my duty, Marna, to take care of Epi and provide for her. Thank you, sir, but I don't want to be a lady. I have claim on you, Epi. Your mother was my wife, and that means I have a natural claim on you that must stand before any other. Well, why didn't you say so? Sixteen years ago, before I'd come to love her. Oh, Marna, I was wrong. <laughs> you might as well rip the heart out of my body. God gave it to me, because you turned your back upon her. God thinks for it's mine. I've repented of my actions. Repentance doesn't change what's been going on for 16 years. When a man turns a blessing from his door, it falls to those as take it in. You're coming here and saying I'm her father. Doesn't alter the feelings in us. Marla, be reasonable. You'd cut us in two. Your feelings for Epi should make you rejoice. Her lot in life may be fixed in a way oh, very different. She may marry some low-class working man. Oh, I'm sorry I've hurt you, but I'm afraid I must insist I take care of my own daughter. I'll say no more! Speak to the child, I'll hinder nothing. Nancy heard Silas's words with relief. As did Godfrey. Oh, Her wish, wish was achieved. achieved. Epi did not come forward and curtsy. She grabbed Silas' hand in her firmly and spoke with cold decision. I have no father but one. No one should come between us. I have not been the father I sure to have been all these years. And uh, we'll make, I will make that up for you for the rest of my life. And you'll have the best of mothers in my wife. And that'll be a blessing you haven't known. You'll be a treasure to us. We'll want for nothing when we have a child. The open voice that you show Marnie, you'll love and gratitude. And we'd all look to make him comfortable. We will hope you'll love us as well. I have no delight in life anymore. I'm forced to leave and know my father's at home feeling alone and thinking of me. We have no one till I was sent. We have nothing when I'm gone. Be sure, Epi, that you won't regret to live amongst poor folk when you might have everything at the best. I shouldn't know what to wish for. The fine things I haven't been used to. I like the working folks in their ways. I'm promised to marry Aaron Winthrop, a working man, as I live with Far and help me take care of him. Aaron Winthrop? You should like to be married. He always behaves pretty to you. Doesn't he, Father? No one could behave better. I wasn't brought up to be a lady. Happy. The duty that you owe to your lawful father. I tried to pass for childless once. Nancy. Now I do so again against my wishes. It's my punishment. Marna. You are right. When a man turns a blessing away from his door, it falls upon someone else. 
Will she continue to provide for her own new life she's chosen? And I still hope there's ways of fixing things here and there. Will you make it known about Epi being your daughter? I shall put it in my will. I shouldn't like for this to be found out. Like that of Dunstan. Seated at their breakfast, and he said to her, I have no home with this now. I may never know whether they got at the truth of the robbery in Lantern Yard. It's dark to me, and shall be to the end. Many things were made dark to his father. He seemed he was hard done by. You would never know the rise of it. I thought I could never trust nor love again. But since it was come to me, I have loved you. Last night, you said to Mr. Cass that you would like to stay with me. I... I trust you. I can trust you till I die. I can love and I can trust again. You taught me that, Effie. After everything that happened in Lantern Yard. You taught me that. 